Hey there. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to put a pull start on a motor became today. Uh, kind of the reason I'm doing this is I no longer have pedals on my moped and uh, I'm running a clutch pulley and the clutchless Doppler, Doppler uh, variator and so I've got to run my ass off to get this thing started and like jam cardboard into the variator so it gets grip and stuff and I've got to use the decomp on the, the head pretty much to start it. Um, I'd like to run ahead with no decomp, so I think this is the ticket. So here is the ignition I'm running. It's the MVT Premium, and uh, I'll show you the pull start I'm gonna put on here. So here's, here's the pull start I picked up. I basically just kind of Googled around and did like 50cc small engine pull start and stuff and I came across this one. It's a cheap Chinese deal um, I think it's actually for a GS moon pocket bike, whatever that is. I'm sure it's shitty <laughs> Whatever it is, but that's that's what I got and uh, here's the starter Paul you can see It's got a nut in the middle and these two uh, teeth on the sides and just to kind of show you how this guy works um there's this little rotating piece in the middle here. And uh, when you pull it, there's a ramp right there, and it'll go up. And so that'll make contact with those these teeth up here on the pawl. Turn the crank over, turn the engine over, vroom vroom, I'm off to the races. Uh, once it starts, if the engine spins faster than the center piece, it just knocks them down the ramp, and it'll spin freely. So back to the ignition. So right now I'm running, I have the Doppler endurance crank in here and unlike the stock Moby crank which is a left hand thread, the Doppler endurance is a right hand thread and uh, it uses an 11 millimeter uh, with a uh, one millimeter pitch um, uh, nut on here which are surprisingly almost non-existent. So, uh, it's the same deal on the other side, so I basically am running a Doppler variator, Doppler variator nut on both sides of the crank. So that's what I've been using up till now. I've got something different, which I'll show you in a second, but just pull this off. This is an internal rotor setup. Um, there's two, I've already taken it out, but there's two Allen bolts that go through here and that allows you to uh, kind of fine tune the uh, timing by hand. But, and I kind of wanted to retain that functionality, so um, I could put a plate here, mount the pull start on the plate, and put the pawl on the crank, but I'm going to do it a little different, so let me just yank all this crap out of here. So this will come off, and then uh, I've got this little stator plate deal, or just a plate, I guess, uh, that mounts to the engine via these two holes. And so I'm just going to kind of piggyback this, I'm going to put a plate just a thin piece of uh, sheet metal uh, back here. I'm going to cut a hole around this guy and just uh, use these same nuts that this plate's using. Put that on there. Then it'll sit behind here. And then I'll have uh, some holes Oops. In, the, uh, in the plate to hold the other plate on the front, which is going to hold the pull start and stuff. So um, this nut piece this isn't going to work with the pawl because it, uh, if I mount it on top, it uh, it'll stick into the uh, into the pull start. So here's what I got going on. Okay, so here's how I plan on uh, rigging up the pawl. These uh, let me macro wise this. Uh, you see, there's a couple welds holding this nut into the center of the pawl. I'm just gonna zip these off with a grinder, pop that out. Then I'm gonna drill this out uh, with a bit big enough. I'm not sure what size is right yet, but something big enough so I can fit the, the threads of the crank through there. And then um, I found this guy. Um, this is a uh, uh, 11, mil 11 millimeter nut, and I found that uh, Toyota actually used these on some of their older Supers and stuff. You can get them at your local Toyota dealership, they might have to order them, but you'll get them in like a day or two, but um, there's that, and so I'm gonna just uh, replace that nut I'm zipping out with this guy, and uh, 
then that'll get uh, uh, that'll just get mounted on the edge of the crankshaft and um, we'll take the place of that Doppler variator nut. So while I'm at it, I'm going to go over some of the other stuff I've got assembled. I just I had some sheet metal on hand, so I just kind of roughed out two pieces. They're basically four and a half, somewhat square, and uh, got some uh, three and a half inch, uh, quarter inch uh, machine screws, some lock washers and stuff. And then I bought like this long piece of uh, quarter inch PVC pipe because it was like a buck fifty, and I'm going to use that as spacers so I can get the distance dialed in so that the uh, those rods in the pull start um, are at the right height so they grab the pawl when it's pulled but they'll uh, uh, they'll move past it when it's retracted so got that so one of these guys is gonna get the pull start mounted on it I'm gonna zip a hole in the center of each of these um, this is gonna go here this guy will go on the engine hole gets zipped out I'll drill two holes here so I can mount it to the case. I'm going to zip holes here, 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 and here on both the top and the bottom for the screws. And so that's it. I'm going to kind of start working on this now. And there you go. That's uh, my finished pull start. You can see how I kind of rigged it up with the... Uh, um, the plates and the spacers and stuff I don't know I don't think it looks that pretty I'll probably end up doing uh, some sort of different enclosure long term but at least I know um, the spacing and all that stuff now uh, but you can see I'll just pull this slowly but you can kind of hear the engine turning over and then when I let go it returns so yay uh, thanks for watching. Bye.